All right, let's check out the construction on these. Pretty nice, right? Alright guys, so in the second half of this video, I'm going to finish up this cabinet here. And uh, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to go ahead and round over all these edges, round over the tops of these drawers here and make them so that, uh, you know, when you put your hands in, you're not hitting the sharp edge there. Sand everything, the front mainly, the sides have all been sanded, but I'm going to sand it all the front down, install my drawer slides, and then start making and uh, adding my finished drawer fronts and then handles. So come along, let's go uh, get this thing done. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna start out with is rounding over the drawers, uh, the tops there so that there's no sharp edges. And I do this with a quarter inch cove bit inside my rigid uh, compact fixed space router. Now I wanna round over all of the edges except the very front. Uh, where it attaches to the false drawer front. I'm going to leave that with the sharp edge because that way it'll go up against the drawer and there'll be no gap there. Move on to the face frame. And that's going to involve some sanding on the purple heart and maple to make sure that it all blends together. So it took a little bit of time to do this, but eventually I got it all smooth and ready for the next step. I pull out my... Uh, compact router again and I still have that same quarter inch roundover bit in that that I used on the drawers and now I'm going to go on all the inside pieces and on the one side of the cabinet to round over all the purple hearts so that there's no sharp corners. Now I do leave a sharp corner I believe is on the left side that goes up against my dishwasher because I'm going to add a one inch piece of purple heart to that and blend that in so that that uh, gives a little bit of space between the cabinet and the dishwasher. By holding your finger down on the base, uh, right on top of the edges there, this gives a stable cut on the router and allows it to uh, follow the edge without uh, flopping back and forth like sometimes you get when you're trying to do an edge that uh, doesn't have much in the way of contact space on the base of the router. Okay, so the next step was to add the drawers into this cabinet. Now, I use the Rockler Universal Drawer Slide Jig for adding these particular centerline drawer slides to the drawers that went into this cabinet. And they'll be the same ones that I'll be using for the entire kitchen. If you want to check out how I went about all of this, I did make a separate video on that that goes into detail on the uh, assembly and the lining up and all the techniques that I used to add those drawers into this cabinet. So check that out by clicking on the upper right little circle on your screen. Now it's time to make the drawer fronts. And I start by cutting my maple to width and I believe I use two and a half and then I take a small little piece off of it on the joiner and this just gives me a nice flat edge for my purple heart to glue into and uh, keep everything flat. So that's all I'm doing here is just truing up one edge of my maple. And unless that line, I put a little arrow facing down onto the surface that I actually used on the joiner so I know which, what, which side to glue the purple heart into. All right, so I didn't show you any of the ripping of the maple pieces or the purple heart, but here I'm cutting down the maple pieces to length uh, for my drawers. And I cut them about an inch over what I need before I glue everything up and that way I have some working room. Now notice that I put a little arrow on each piece that I cut so that I make sure I know which side is the trued up edge that I want to use up against the purple heart. So this is just cross cutting them all to the correct size at this point. Now here I'm going to start working with the purple heart cutting that to the length too. Now I pretty much cut them to the same distance just about the same distance as um, all of my maple pieces so that they uh, they match up fairly well but the purple heart was ripped to a quarter inch wide just a tiny bit over a quarter inch wide because I'm gonna need to flatten up both those sides uh, on the drum sander in a little bit now all of my quarter inch purple heart pieces were cut just a little bit about a sixteenth of an inch over and that's so I could bring them on over to the sander and get rid of all of those burn marks that are on purple heart because it's uh, 
it's a relatively hard wood and it's really difficult not to get saw marks or burn marks in them. So the sander goes ahead and flattens everything out to the same size, which is important when you use it as a trim piece. You want all the pieces to be the exact same thickness when they're glued up so that when they come to the corners, everything matches. Here I'm going to take a quick measurement of the drawers so I know exactly how long they should be when I cut my 45s on them and I will cut them to the exact length so that they just barely fit inside. They're going to be tight but that's what I want. I want them to be a little bit tight when I cut all the pieces. So now I'm going to go ahead and glue up all the purple heart onto what the clean edge of the maple. And you can actually rip the maple to width and then rip the purple heart to width and then glue that all together in longer pieces and then make your cuts. I prefer to do it this way because I feel I get a much better bond. Purple heart tends to um, twist and turn a little bit when it gets cut that narrow, especially on longer pieces. So shorter pieces are a little easier to work with. And once the glue is dry, I just scrape them all off and then all these pieces now are flat enough so they can take them on over to the table saw. Here I'm cutting out the quarter inch maple plywood for my back on this cabinet. And if you remember, I have a quarter inch groove going down the sides and into the bottom. And I'm cutting this to the width and the length so that it fits exactly inside the back of that cabinet. After a couple test cuts on scrap pieces, I got my 45 degree lined up so that it's almost perfect, or at least as perfect as I can get it. Uh, so that when all these pieces are glued together, they, they don't have any gaps in them. That's important uh, for drawer fronts. So all I'm doing is just cutting 40, 45s on all the pieces, and they're all being cut to the exact length that I need them. And again, those are the inside measurements of the drawer front and the cabinet. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the first piece of my cut just to make sure that my stomp lock is set to the correct dimensions and I want to make sure that that piece fits inside the drawer opening tightly. So as long as it fits inside, I just don't want to have a lot of play on either side, I'm good to go and I can just make the rest of my cuts. Now with my stop lock in place, I can make very consistent cuts between all four pieces so they all turn out exactly the same with the exact same angle. Off camera, I have my four pieces, the rails and styles, clamped up so that I could see what the dimensions are for the inside piece that needs to be cut. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm ripping the piece to width and then I'll be cutting it to length. Now, this is gonna involve some finessing to make sure that it's just right because you want that piece to fit in there perfect. Now, the important part is to make sure that you're cutting everything true and square. And uh, that way, so when you glue up everything, you have little to no gaps in between all the stuff for your drawer fronts. Now in order to get a precise measurement for the length of my drawer fronts, I'm using a metal ruler uh, to lay it out, to lay out everything and make sure that my cut is going to be exactly what I need because I had to go down to a 32nd to get just the right dimension to fit inside there to make sure that everything squares up and all of my miter joints come uh, together precisely. With the measurement taken, I go ahead and clamp in the piece because I want the piece to be locked in as tight as possible so that there's no movement so that I make a nice square cut onto this piece of wood. Otherwise, if you have a little bit of flexing by holding there, you can hold it tight enough, um, that piece of wood is going to not cut square. And like I said before, it's really important to have the wood cut square at this point. Now it's just a matter of placing the glue onto all the pieces and clamping them in there. Now I like to use, you know, I've used brushes, I've used all kinds of stuff when I need to with the glue, but most cases I just use my finger. That seems to spread the glue the best, give you a nice thick layer of glue there uh, that squeezes out well. And you don't want, you want to make sure that you get plenty of glue on these edges, especially on those miter joints. Uh, you want them to be glued up. Now these clamps, I cannot say enough good things about them. These are the Bessie strap clamps, band clamps, and um, those corner pieces work perfect. And for something like this, uh, I was really impressed at how well and how easy it was to clamp everything up and get it square with this particular clamp. So of all the band clamps that I've used in the past, these are probably the best ones I've used so far. And I've used them on a number of things. I've used them gluing up the drawers, the drawer fronts here. Now notice, uh, 
in the background there I have the other drawer is clamped up it's dry clamped so to make sure that everything fits well and then I just loosen up like I did on the front one here and put my glue in and glue them all up notice the sample piece in front of the drawer that I made first and check to make sure that all the glue joints were or all the cuts were square on that now after the clamps are uh, tightened up really tight and everything is squared up in there I add two bar clamps along the long edge of the drawer just to make sure that there's no gaps on that long stretch of um, wood clamping together there and this again just guarantees that I don't have any gaps there and makes for a nice solid glue bond you will also notice that uh, out of the, the actual drawer front goes out of the frame for real quick here and that's because I'm checking to make sure there's no light coming through any part of it that uh, everything is clamped together and squared and looking good the second drawer front is done exactly the same as the first one there's no um, nothing different on that one except that it is a little bit easier once you've done the first one uh, it seems like the every one that you clamp up after that just seems to be able to get a little bit easier each time once you've gone through the whole process the first time once the glue is dried the drawer fronts are taken over to the drum sander and ran through until they're all smooth on both sides and if you don't own a drum sander uh, I would recommend that's something you should save up for for your shop uh, I have to say that's one of the best investments I made in my shop and one of the best time savers nobody likes the sand and for something like this it's just perfect it uh, makes everything flat and even and uh, you know it takes just a little bit of sanding afterwards to finish it all up and it looks like I'm Margaritaville time with that uh, pink flamingo t-shirt back there so um, I guess I'm having a pretty good time in the summer here in my shop now once the drawers are finished sanded now is the time where I take and size them up to each of the openings and to do that I use my joiner and I take a very very minute cut I think it's like a 1 64th cut but what you want to do is you want to make sure that you go around to all the edges on every single cut so if you if you make one cut you want to make sure you go all the way around the edges because if you don't you're going to have the uh, very corners are going to be off as to where your glue line is coming out so every time you uh, reduce it down you want to go ahead and go all the way around you notice that I fit it to the front of the drawer there and then I'm going to go come back and start cutting again now it doesn't take much off there but it makes it so that the drawers fit in there perfectly and the drawers also match the opening because no matter how well you do everything your openings are going to be just a slight bit off uh, from each other and uh, using this method here makes it so that your drawer openings fit very precise in there and just makes a nice clean uh, even uh, line all the way around the drawers once the drawer front is fitted to the size opening where it goes I make sure that I label it or keep it in order so I know which drawer goes where now in this particular cabinet I only have two drawers so it's relatively easy to know which drawer is the top one which drawer is the bottom one but uh, if you're doing a lot of drawers at once you definitely want to uh, separate them and know which ones go where so they fit back into their perspective openings and uh, everything is a match now the final finish is put on. I'm using a quarter round um, bit again and that's just going to break down the edges and I want to watch that one corner there because it's relatively easy to have it chip out so you want to sometimes go backwards on it and just go relatively slow. But on the front I used the roundover bit and the back I will just use a 45 degree bit just to uh, chamfer the back of the drawer a little bit just to give it a finished edge rather than having a hard edge you're just sanding it down it seems to give it a little better uh, finish on that. so again quarter round on the front and a uh, 45 degree chamfer on the back just a slight one uh, but uh, that gives it a finished look now I did a final sanding off camera and it didn't take much time but uh, I do want to sand it down to right around 180 grit or a little better the next step is just adding into the, adding the hardware and I drill out my holes for the hardware before putting these onto the drawer because that makes it easier for me to line up the drawers and um, get them squared away in there and I'll show you that in the next process but here I'm using the Craig drawer slide jig and uh, this one works really well I, I really like this jig and I already have it set to the width of my drawer handles already 
so that makes it a little bit easier but all you got to do is just line up everything it has center marks on it and you just find the center of your drawer from both left and right and top and bottom and once you line up on that center mark you're good to go and then it makes drilling these holes relatively simple now the holes that I drill are going to be a little bit larger than the actual uh, bolts that go through for my handles and that allows me some wiggle room to move the drawer front around for a final fit and you'll see that in the next step now I found for this step of adding the drawer fronts to the cabinet it's much easier to lay the cabinet down on its back so that way you can set the drawers down onto the cabinet and make all your adjustments around the edges and the uh, gravity holds it all into place and makes it much easier for you so uh, that's all I'm doing here is I'm going to place it down on its back put my drawer fronts onto the drawers in their perspective openings the ones that they uh, fit correctly and then I'm going to actually use playing cards to space it out evenly all the way around and uh, then I take and just drill through the two holes that I've already made for the handles I drill them into the actual drawer itself okay so now I move the cabinet on up to the bench there to make it a little easier to add this in but I put the screws into the back of the drawer there and then I will place the drawer the false drawer front on to the front of the drawers and then screw on the handles and now I can close the drawer adjust my false front uh, to where I need it by uh, you know just loosening up the screws on the handle once I find it where it fits in perfect I pull the drawer out and tighten up the handle then double check all my fittings again now once I have both of the drawer fronts lined up correctly or at least in the position that I want them in I will slide the drawer out and go ahead and clamp them down now I'm going to use the Bessie clamp here to make sure that they're locked in tight and from the back side I'm going to add a screw into there on both sides of the drawer and that's going to lock the drawer in so now you have two screws coming in from the back that lock the drawer down drawer front down and then you also have the two bolts going through into the handle locking the drawer front down so uh, that drawer front's going to stay there but the good thing is that if anything happens to the drawer front later on let's say it gets damaged or anything it's relatively easy for me to take that off and replace it because I don't have any glue holding in there and it also allows for some expansion but as you can see I take my time checking to make sure that all of my gaps are the same and everything looks good and I just adjust the drawer up and down until everything fits just perfect and the self-closing slides have no problem pulling the drawer in okay so as you can see I finished my base microwave cabinet and that's uh, that's good to go and I got the drawers all installed here and I have the back put on here already but I haven't put the um, the nailers on in the back yet I'm gonna wait till uh, I do my next cabinets when I start to get the pocket hole jig out I'll do the, those at that time and I can add them to the end but I do have the back in there and uh, slid it down it's just a quarter inch piece cut to size with the grooves back there now you see that I have two different cabinets here I have uh, this base cabinet and this one and um, they both go on the outside part of my my kitchen now I wanted to I built this one separate from that one and I only did one at a time because they're still a uh, prototype I'm still working on the construction and everything and so uh, that's why I wanted to make sure this this would match the look of that now this original one was done with a uh, dado construction so the, the uh, shelves in here actually the separators actually are dadoed into that piece now I found that that was really difficult uh, because I'm by myself on glue up so I wanted to make it a little bit easier so that's where I decided to go with the pocket hole jig on this one and that does make assembly much easier now uh, as far as quality goes uh, they're going to be exactly the same both these uh, cabinets are are going to be very nice at the end and they are both going to be durable and solid and uh, you know stay together for a lifetime easily so the cabinets that I have here now in my in my kitchen which you will see eventually when I start tearing out the kitchen uh, I actually constructed those and that was back in 1987 when I had my cabinet shop so uh, I made all those cabinets and those are really um, uh, a lower grade cabinet those are really um, a fast assembly type all nail uh, cabinets whereas these are done much much nicer so 
Now that I have uh, the, my construction, the way that I'm going to do it, uh, I found a couple little things that are issues. Uh, for example, this is my finished side, and this side is actually going towards the dishwasher. So what I'm going to have to do is, you notice I didn't round over this part, I'm going to actually add about a one-inch piece on here, a spacer, because I should have a little wider piece when I'm going into like dishwashers or stoves, uh, things like that. Now the next cabinet that I do, I'm just going to automatically put uh, one inch wide or like it would be an inch and three quarter inch wide piece here uh, That's going to go next to my dishwasher and my stove uh, For my next cabinets, but for these I'm just going to add on there because that's something I was looking at and figured that I needed to do uh, But all the rest of my construction is gonna be like this So uh, what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to make all of my cuts for all of my base cabinets at the same time, assemble all of those, and then make all of my cuts for my upper cabinets at the same time and assemble all of those. So uh, I don't have this one posted yet, this assembly, but I will, I will post that just to show you a different method of putting together cabinets. Uh, it's a little different than this, so uh, I'll put that one up. I think I have everything uh, shot for that. I think uh, I think I did shoot all that. So I'll try to put that up for you guys too so you can see that. But if you do like what you see in here, please do subscribe to the channel. love to have you uh, tag along and come along with me as I finish this. But uh, other than that, another cabinet done. The wife's getting a little happier every time she sees another cabinet done. So uh, now it's on to my sink cabinet. And uh, like I said before, all of our base cabinets are going to have all drawers so there's going to be no uh, the only place that's going to have doors on it will be right underneath the sink but all the rest are going to be a drawer construction so hope you enjoy it